So, hey, Joe, um, it, I'm glad to uh, check in and see what's how you're doing. Uh, as you know, this conversation is really just to learn a little bit about how all of us are finding our way through this extraordinary experience. And I have a number of questions to ask you, and I hope that we can have um, a great conversation together. So the, the first question that I want to ask of, of most everybody and I ask for, for you is, how are you doing with quarantine in, in these extraordinary times? How, how, how are you managing? <laughs> That's a loaded question there, Rodney. For sure. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, as Beth said, I mean, it's kind of one of those things we keep saying to look, Diane and look at each other, like how much longer is this going to be? Um, you know, we're getting into routine which has been nice in that fact that you know, we having everybody together, you know, I always have been working from home, so I'm kind of used to it. Right. Um, but it's nice, like in my breaks, being able to go downstairs and see my family. Um, you know, my breaks, I go downstairs, I wrestle with my boys and they're having school. What's, we're blessed the fact that Diane's a teacher. Right. Um, so they're getting a great education through, but it's tough because as far as them getting their development, being with their, their friends, um, you know, they're seeing their friend through the computer. Um, you know, we don't see, we've gone to their friend's houses and, and driveways and stuff like that, but it's just not the same. Um, you know, just miss physical contact with sure. uh, our parents, our, um, our friends, you, you know, our, our church family, um, that sort of thing. Um, we're eating a lot. <laughs> um so uh, cooking a lot too i bet cooking a lot you know uh, bike rides and you know diane got a swing for the boys in the back which they love but um so there's some really great things as far as being together um there's a nice routine uh that we've kind of gone to so look, there's ups and downs so yeah gonna, i guess i think um the hardest part for us is we don't know when the end is that yeah. sort of open-ended thing um, drives that question, how long, you know? Yeah. Um, like I said, we, we, I, I see at least a couple of times a week, we go to each other, like, how much longer is this? Gonna right. be, yeah. So. You understand in some ways um, that that classic question in, from the psalmist, how long, oh Lord, how long, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have an answer yet, which mm -hmm. can be frustrating yeah. or make it that much more difficult. Yeah. What's your fa family's favorite meal? Speaking of quarantine and doing all that cooking, do, do you have it? Have you found a favorite meal now? Well, Charlie's is totally hot dogs. Okay. Um, Theodore's is donuts. That okay. I finally was able to go to the market and get donuts. Friday nights, I've been doing pizza. So I've been mm -hmm. making dough Thursday night. So let it rise in the fridge. So we do homemade pizza Friday nights. Um, yeah, I guess I would say pizza is, is, is fun because it's you know, doing it in the oven. Um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of, what about you guys? Boy, I, I came up with a, uh, a homemade uh, meatloaf recipe with um, Beyond Burgers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kids really love that one. They, I'm, I'm making it tonight, actually. Nice. And they, they'll always um, uh, ask, you know, oh, when are we going to have meatloaf next? And back in the day before I was vegan, we would, we would, usually have like a taco night i'd make tacos or or fajitas something like that and we'd kind of lay the spread out and we could all make our tacos and then when i became vegan it was like well no more hamburg no more chicken so we couldn't do this anymore and the kids were really bummed but now with the beyond burger and it really has a great um yeah. uh, flavor and texture to ground beef i i uh, made it as a surprise for them and and they were so happy they're like taco tuesday night is back you know and so now they uh love uh taco tuesdays uh we don't have them uh every tuesday beyond burger is much more well, taco tuesdays is going to be um on Cinco de mayo next week right right so we'll definitely have to we'll, we'll definitely have to plan that one out as far as um having tacos but i think those are the two meals that our family has um, really, really loved. It's uh, everybody loves it. You know, you mm. mentioned Charlie likes this, Theodore likes that. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, we have meals like that. Um, yeah. But the one where everybody's happy is probably, you know, tacos mm. and meatloaf, sort of 
old yeah. American staples, if you will, meatloaf. Um, mm. But tacos is a, a little uh, uh, American twist on it, but but probably uh, a, a little bit more ethnic food than nice. than your standard one. Yeah. So the other question that I had is, how has God shown up in unexpected ways? It, it seems like, you know, the answers that you gave to the how you um, – uh, uh, dealing with quarantine, I could hear some possible uh, things there with family and, and different blessings, but are there other ways in which God is showing up in unexpected ways? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's unexpected. I mean, I guess, because I've always seen, you know, God and my family, like just the, the blessings of, of having my family with me, you know, seeing my boys. The best is, um, when I hear my, my sons talk to each other and and play with each other and just feeling so blessed that they have each other. Right. Um, and that to me is, is, you know, not so unexpected, but it's, it's really lovely to hear and, and to just to, for them to be together um, and just to be, you know, be with my wife and just to have her as my companion, as my friend and, and just my, my partner in this, this crazy time. Yeah. So um, a lot of people have said, you know, seeing so much more of each other is, is stressful and makes it harder. They are able to handle family in smaller doses. Mm -hmm. and, and for some, that's unexpected in a, in a harder way. But for you, it sounds like um, seeing more of each other has been a bigger blessing. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'd be, you know, wouldn't if you're going to be together, there's going to be some instances of where you get on each other's nerves by all sure. means, but we've been able to, you know, rectify and, and, and get, you know, back on track and, and, you know, that we, we love each other and understand that, you know, we're kind of in these four walls and, um, and kind of kind of move on. Uh, also too, in, in the work that I do often here, because I take phone calls and, I know that's one of your other questions as far as how I'm able to serve, um, about how many people are calling, because I work with assisted living and, and taking phone calls for our communities, how many people are wanting to volunteer and come and help our seniors, um, whether it be for volunteering or want to uh, make masks or make bring sanitizer or, um, so that's been very, very sweet. Um, how many people out there want to help? Yeah, we've seen that in the church too. We've got the food rescue and, and distribution place where we're partnering with uh, Connects for MPO. And we've been amazed by how many people have reached out on Facebook um, or on the phone or in any way to, you know, do you need this? How can I volunteer? How can I serve? It, it, in my mind, it shouldn't be that unexpected, but, but it kind of is, you know, you, you're trying to do something and you want to do the right thing. And yeah. then all of a sudden there's people popping up all over the place um, wanting to help and, and partner with doing it. It's, yeah. it, it's a, in some sense an unexpected way in which God shows up, but maybe we should expect it, you know, because yeah. mm -hmm. people are good. And yeah. when we forget that um, we get surprised when they do good things, but mm -hmm. Um, maybe shouldn't be that surprising. Um, I'll just say my kids are older, you know, Ethan and Grace are a bit older and maybe it matters because they're boy and girl, but cherish um, your boys uh, enjoying their time together because yeah. when they get older, it might be more challenging. Yeah. Maybe oh, not. They, they still argue. They still argue, but I'm the, sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, for the most part, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it is fun, though, to see when Ethan and Grace, you know, start to hang out and really enjoy each other's company. So I, I know what you're saying in that regard. You know, maybe they'll share a show and, and or they'll be watching TikToks together and we'll hear them just break out into um, unending laughter, if you will. And, mm -hmm. and they're kind of together or laughing together. That's it. That's been really cool for mm -hmm. us, too, yeah. for sure. So you um, touched on the, uh, how have you been able to serve or um, been served in these circumstances? Do you, do you have any other stories that you'd like to share in that, in that regard? So one thing that's interesting is I, I've been in healthcare for well, over 20 years. And yep. um, for a while I've been feeling um, 
to say guilty is maybe too strong a word, but feeling that I should maybe be in the front lines, be in a community. Um, you know, when back in the day when it would snow, I would be in a community for three days long because, you know, no power or something like that, bringing community. And, you know, so not being there, I'm feeling like I'm not doing my, my part. So what we're doing is, so my job normally is, is answering the phone. I, I sit right here answering the phone for people who are interested in moving into Sunrise or it's assisted living. We have communities across the country, um, in New Jersey alone, probably about 20, uh, New York, right? Um, right now, obviously not many people are inquiring where I would open up my, my computer. We would have about 70 people inquiring. Now we got like three. Right. Um, so our job has been redefined. We're almost like Rosie the Riveter. So our <laughs> job, we have got a new job and that is, um, so I would say the majority of our communities have positive cases. Sure. Um, so we have been, one of our responsibilities is when a positive case appears in one of our communities, we are calling out all the families. Um, so our goal is to call the families as soon as possible. So we're been giving the list of the family members in that community. So we're the ones calling um, the community, the families to alert them that there's a positive case in the community, letting them know as far as what we're doing as far as isolation, cleaning the community and, and answering any questions. And if there's anything we can't answer, we're gonna pass on to the executive director, um, but also fielding a hotline uh, support line for anybody else, any of our family members. And those calls can get tough, you know. Sure. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're easy. You know, sometimes like, well, thank you very much for what you're doing. Um, quite often, no, I have a lot of people that are, you know, are crying, and it's, um, you know, that it's their worst fear, and very much, I, you know, it's understandable. Um, the best thing I can do is just be empathetic and. Um, you know, I just assure them that we're doing everything we possibly can. Um, or people that are calling, also just looking for a place for their parent um, that are coming out of a hospital or a nursing home. But I can't say that we could take them. I'm almost that guy who's saying, I'm sorry, there's no room at the end because right. um, we can't take anybody from a hospital or a nursing home. That's one of our restrictions at the moment. Um, or just in New York and New Jersey, and we have Illinois and Massachusetts. Uh, we're just not allowed anybody to, to move in at the moment. So my job is completely on, on end. Um, you know, that being said, though, I'm just so blessed that I do have a job. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, I, I got that. I mean, just scary to think about how many people are, are out of jobs. Um, you know, my, my brother and you know, I know who's um, been out of job, but my brother, who's very extremely talented, um, you know, is telling me that he, he's actually delivering pizzas, which is makes me so proud that nice. he's doing whatever he possibly can. Um, so, but yes, that's kind of been my my how I'm able to serve is answering those phone calls to these families um, and trying to help them you know, deal with what, and supporting my communities. And right. I am proud to be, I really am proud to be working for Sunrise. Um, you know, I think we do a very good job. We've been, we have conference calls and we're, it's very fluid. Like each day is a new, um, new policy as far as, not saying new policy, but a new approach on what we're doing, you know, how we're going to, um, you know, new communities that having, you know, positive cases and, um, we have plenty of, um, you know, protective equipment. Um, so it's been difficult. It's in, I don't know, I really don't know how we're going to, our industry is going to, like, it's going to be so different. I, I, I see people like, um, like my heart goes out to like the, the Cartney and Christopher uh, and their friends that are, are in this, like, um, like I'm going to, I'm a licensed executive director. I mean, I would never, ever want to be an executive director in this situation. Right. Uh, that means it's just, uh, on the other hand, I, I, again, like I said before, I would want to be in this community somehow, some way, just to be able to, to support them. Um, but on the other hand, I don't want to 
be coming home to put my family at risk. Yeah. You know, the people are not being able to come home to see their family. It's, you know, it's a catch 22. So. For sure. And I get that um, yearning to sort of want to be on the front line because you feel like you're, you're doing more for people. Mm -hmm. But I also get that sense of, you know, putting your family at risk, uh, the how hard it is mm -hmm. um, to deal with the loss and that kind of thing. But I would commend you and encourage you in the work you're doing because it sounds like it's really pastoral. You know, you're you're connecting with people in the midst of their fear and anxiety and trying yeah. to help them uh, understand all the things that you're doing um, yeah. and and really in many ways ministering to what their needs are. Some of it just information, some of it, you know, addressing fears, um, anxieties, uh, all this stuff. And fear and anxiety feels to be like this, it's almost in the air now yeah. for, for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I just commend you and encourage you in that because it's a great service. I mean, I, it feels like I'm, I'm tooting my own horn as a pastor, but but just bringing comfort and information and showing people how you're caring for their loved ones um, is a great service. And I bet if I interviewed them after the fact, they would say that, you know, mm -hmm. that as much as yeah. they're afraid and concerned for their loved ones, they're grateful for the phone calls and the care yeah. that, that mom or dad or grandpa or grandma or whoever mm -hmm. um, is receiving in the midst yeah. of that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I appreciate that. The last question that I have, and, and this one might be self-serving, I guess, but um, in the midst of the quarantine and kind of the stay at home orders, if you will, um, what, what have you um, learned about the role that the church plays in your life? Well, I, it's funny. It's, what's been nice is that because I work every, every other weekend. Right. Um, it's been nice having church online because sure. I've been able to actually be at church. Um, I have it accessible. So Diane will come into my office because I'm still working, but I'm, I'm not getting many, as many phone calls. I'm not as busy on a Sunday morning so I can look on and I've been actually been be able to participate each, each week. Um, and it's been nice. It's been nice being able to be part of um, uh, a community, although virtual, um, but be able to, to, you know, still, you know, be able to, to do that each week. I miss everybody, you know. You realize how much of um, a family our community is. Um, like, so miss, you know, everybody. You know, just, uh, and I, I had always known that, because going to church every other week, um, you know, because I work every other weekend. Um, but now it's, it's been well, you know, well over a month, almost, maybe two months now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yesterday was 50 days. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're blessed to have what we have and looking forward to getting it back. Well, I'm glad to hear that there's been uh, a bonus for you in the online worship yeah. version that you can attend every week. Um, it's a great way of thinking about it positively. I have a similar story. My mother-in-law, my uncle, sometimes my parents or, or brother or sister are able to, to join with us online as well. And they could never do that, you know, from Michigan. Yeah. So that's been a blessing as yeah. well. It's um, funny because we watched my brother-in-law right after you in yep. Wisconsin. And it's a whole, it's a very different. Very different worship experience, I'm sure. Yeah, couldn't be more different. <laughs> and, and that's okay. You know, that's, uh, that is the joy of the church. It, it can look very different in each context yeah. and, mm -hmm. and each kind of ministry. We're a little bit more laid back. Um, yeah. And a lot of my colleagues are still in the pulpit and, and preaching with a camera from from sort of yeah. a distance and that oh, you would get you would totally get along with him he's a really great guy i mean he did he did the parking lot sermon uh, sure. service on easter <laughs> right right <laughs> but um yeah he's a little more um what would you say brimstone and fire and brimstone type of preacher yeah a little bit more serious about um the consequences in the yeah. bad ways right mm -hmm. yeah well 
I guess that's not my style and that's okay with me. Yeah, so, we like it. <laughs> but I have some of the same uh, misses, you know, it's like, I, I'm very appreciative that Lisa can uh, pull up the YouTube songs and, and it, mm -hmm. they, they sound really lovely, but I miss singing with everybody oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, kind of passing the piece and checking in and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. So, yeah. I mean, is there anything else? Like if you're talking about, uh, you know, your experience, the church, serving being served any any other things you'd like to share about how this experience is going with you or for you you know i guess it's one of those things that's just it's uh, it's almost like a um i think about almost like a grieving process like Cooper ross um you know you kind of is it a little bit of a denial yep. acceptance um bargaining you're kind of going through you don't really go through those stages right in a row but you kind of kind of hit hit them every so often right um, you know you kind of wake up like hmm is this really happening you know is it yeah you know, that that denial and, and denial is not a bad thing right you don't you can't you know it's actually kind of a, a it's okay to be in denial because if you were to stay in denial all the whole you know if you were to you're not going to get anything done and you know acceptance you really do you know to be able to accept it. um so if i kind of that's maybe my been my approach i've been thinking about cobra ross and um the stages of um you know of the, that death and die i not to be so so morbid um but that that kind of those those steps um but i know we're gonna get by this um I just, you know, I, I fear for those who the weakened immune systems, and yeah. um, and I miss my mother, and I miss my father, and I, I miss my mother-in-law. I don't, I don't know your mother-in-law as well, but I miss your mom and dad too. Uh, you know, they're in our Bible studies and book studies, and it's wonderful to get to see them, but it's not the same. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. they're great people, and yeah. um, uh, yeah. I, I, miss I mean, we've them seen well. them. We've seen them, but like my mother-in-law, we haven't seen since Christmas. So, yeah, so it's tough. Yeah. And like her birthday passed and, so. Well, it's an interesting insight about grief. I mean, talk about uh, providential overlap. Um, I was reading a Harvard Business Review article uh, yesterday, and it was um, written by the person who uh, worked with um, Elizabeth uh, Keebler Ross. His his name is David Kessler, and and he helped in the research and and uh, writing for the five stages of grief. Mm -hmm. And um, he co-wrote with Elizabeth Kubler Ross the on grieving or on grief and grieving finding the uh -huh. meaning of grief through the five stages of loss. Right. So. Um, he has a lot of this same kind of thing. And, and the, the title of the article is um, pretty interesting, that discomfort you're feeling is grief. Um, and he went through sort of describing exactly as you did, the, the way in which we, you know, it's not linear, but we can go from one stage of grief to the other. And, and sometimes we're in denial and then other times we're, we, we bounce to acceptance and then, and kind of all through it. And it was a, it was an interesting read and, and a, uh, a nice way to kind of remind um, us that the feelings that we have are normal. Yeah. And working through them and accepting them um, without kind of letting them dominate everything mm -hmm. um, is part of working through grief. Yeah, and knowing it is yep. important, right? And well, like, what did GI Joe say? Knowing is half the battle. Half the battle. Yeah, right. right, for sure. And so, just being able to identify it says so that we can kind of, you know, it's okay to be sad. It's okay, yeah. you know. You could bargain, you know, and have your treats, and um, you know, go through it, and just be able to identify it and, and share it and talk it out and. As opposed to just kind of keeping it all bottled in there is not such a good idea. 
For sure. And I mean, just as a way of um, uh, sharing some insight that might um, help uh, us in the end of this interview, um, Kessler said that our imaginations are powerful in, in moving forward in all the bad things that could happen. You know, we start thinking about all the, all the fear and anxiety and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said, one of the practices that you can take on is to begin to imagine all the good things. Yeah. Um, and it, it helps to bring a balance. He said, the, you know, letting your imagination kind of go and acknowledging it and, and, you know, saying okay saying it out loud for the bad things there's nothing wrong with that per se you know you shouldn't judge yourself for it but taking a moment you know afterwards or at the same time to uh, intentionally imagine the good things yeah. and we've done that a little bit of that um noticing you know your children and mm -hmm. diane as a partner and that that kind of shifts your brain into thinking like okay there are these bad things and I'm going to acknowledge them and state them as what I'm feeling, but I have these good things too. And, and it can really sort of help us um, uh, frame our world in more than just fear and anxiety, discomfort and grief. Yes. So um, I appreciated that yesterday when I read it. It, um, it, it Oh, is it just yesterday? Yeah, um, it was just yesterday. So how about that? How about timing? It, I know. That's why I thought, wow, you know, God's providence, um, you bringing up this insight and me reading this article just yesterday, it was uh, kind of lovely. That's cool. Are we going to do this again, Rodney? Yeah, I, I think it would be wonderful if we did, for sure. So I'm just going to say goodbye to everybody. If we, if we end up sharing this video, we'll, we'll clip parts of it for worship or whatnot. Cool. And Thank you, uh, Joe, for your insight, and God bless you through uh, the rest of this, however long it lasts, right? Uh, hopefully, we'll be out of it and back into something that'll be a new normal, but um, I want to thank you for your time and your insights, and uh, God bless you with the work that you're doing with the um, senior citizens in, in the communities that you're serving. I, I think that's awesome, and I appreciate that work, and I know the families do as well. So God bless you and uh, take care. You too, bud. Thank you.